What's up guys, Miles here with 9to5Mac, and if you're a fan of good ideas, consider subscribing to the channel for future content like this. Today we've got my M2 MacBook Air finally running the Mac OS Ventura beta, and I thought I'd do a video on my experience running this beta on the M2 Air, just so people can know what the experience is like in case you want to give it a try for yourself. So let's dive in, but first, a word from our sponsor. 9 to 5 Mac on YouTube is sponsored by Mac Paws Clean My Mac X. Clean My Mac is your ideal decluttering app for Mac that keeps your computer free of junk and other unwanted files. Clean My Mac X comes from the folks over at Mac Paw, who are diligent developers we all trust. And they've made sure that Clean My Mac is not only one of the safest Mac cleaning apps out there, but one of the smartest and most well designed. With just a few clicks, you're very easily able to tune up your Mac to its maximum speed. You can get rid of those large hidden files that you can't easily locate in the finder. Clean My Mac X also fights off and protects your computer from Mac specific malware. And those are just a few features. For the next two weeks, viewers can get a 5% discount on Clean My Mac X. So be sure to check the link in the description and take advantage of that offer. And a big thanks to MacPaw for sponsoring 9to5Mac on YouTube. So I'm currently on beta three of Mac OS Ventura. And so far, I think this has been the most stable Mac OS Ventura experience I've had out of all the different devices I've tested this beta on so far. I've run it on my Mac mini with M1. I've run it on my 14 inch MacBook Pro with M1 Pro, but I've had the smoothest overall experience on this M2 Air. And I wonder if the fact that this Mac is running the M2 chip has anything to do with that. Maybe not, but I thought I'd point it out. The M2 MacBook Air, as you may know, now features a 13.6 inch display as opposed to the M1 Air's 13 inch display. And you can definitely tell that there's been an increase in size as soon as you take it out of the box. For me, that was the case in the fact that the screen just feels just as big as my 14 inch MacBook Pro without putting them side by side for a direct comparison. And using Stage Manager is another one of the ways that the M2 Air feels like the same screen experience as what you get on the 14 inch MacBook Pro. Stage Manager, when enabled, will take up real estate on your screen by having open apps shelved on the left side of the interface. And when using Stage Manager on this technically smaller screen compared to my MacBook Pro, it feels like I've got just as much real estate for all of my windows that I've got open. As far as the stability of Stage Manager specifically goes, I've noticed that while this isn't the most stable or unstable as other Macs I've tried Ventura and Stage Manager on, I have noticed that compared to my M1 Mini, the M2 Air is consistently a lot smoother when rapidly switching between different windows in the Stage Manager. And I think while my rapid fire window switching isn't something people will be doing on a regular basis, I think it's important to point out these little ways in which M2 seems to be outperforming M1 for tasks outside of video editing and other power user related things. Continuity camera as a feature would have definitely been more useful to have a few years ago compared to now, but MacBook webcams still aren't great by any means in my opinion. And so I want to do a direct comparison between the continuity camera experience with my 13 Pro Max versus the built-in camera on the new MacBook Air, because this is the first MacBook Air to feature a 1080p webcam. I know, 1080p, absolutely revolutionary, right? So it should be a lot better than the M1 Air's MacBook webcam on paper. And it definitely is, but as you can see, even when delivering an image over wireless communication, the iPhone still vastly outperforms performs the built-in 1080p camera on the M2 Air. It's definitely an improvement over the M1 MacBook Air, but the iPhone just has so much more definition and dynamic range, and it also allows you to do center stage and studio lighting. So I'm glad that this feature exists to pick up the slack for MacBook webcams. And as far as pure stability, I've had zero issues getting my M2 Air connected to my iPhone for this feature. So it's a thumbs up for me. One thing I was particularly curious about was seeing if macOS Ventura resolves this weird self-charging bug that seems to be plaguing the M2 MacBook Air. In case you weren't aware, YouTubers discovered that when you plug in both ends of the MagSafe charging cable included in the box to the MacBook Air, the MacBook will act as if it's charging. You'll see the charging indicator come on and the screen will get brighter. And I'm pretty sure this is a first as far as a bug like this for the MacBook Pro goes. And when you click on the battery icon in the menu bar, you'll see that the power source says power adapter but it'll of course say it's not charging because obviously it's not charging itself. So yeah, this bug is definitely still present in the Ventura beta, but I expect that by the time the full release comes out, it'll probably be gone. Probably. One of the major accessibility features coming to Mac OS Ventura is background sounds, which means you can go to your settings, go to the accessibility menu, and enable one of a handful of different options to choose from. So far, you've got rain, water streams, the ocean, bright noise, dark noise, and balance noise. And the main reason I brought this feature up is because I thought it'd be a good reason to talk about the MacBook Pro's new speaker setup. Apple didn't really want to go out of their way to talk about the new speaker setup on the MacBook Air, and that's because although it uses a new quad speaker, 
speaker setup with dual subwoofers, I think the placement of the speaker makes for an honestly less enjoyable experience than what you get on the M1 Air. When using background sounds on the M2 Air and comparing that with the M1 Air, I feel as though the M1 MacBook Air has a bit more of a stereo feel due to the placement of the speakers, as opposed to the M2, which has nice speakers for sure, but definitely a different experience because the speakers are more or less on the inside with vents uh, pointing towards the screen to project that sound out towards you to make it feel like the sound is coming from the screen. But even with something as simple as background sounds, you can tell that the M2 Air speaker experience is noticeably different than what you're getting on the the M1 Air. Battery life concerns aren't usually ever a topic of discussion when it comes to the MacBook Air line, but I was curious to see if the MacBook battery life deferred when running the macOS Ventura beta compared to the stock Monterey software. And unfortunately, there aren't any advertised updates to Ventura that should result in improved battery life. And so I was honestly mainly curious to see if the battery performance would be worse than what I've got running on Monterey. And I'm happy to report that no, I haven't experienced any major battery issues when running this beta. You more or less get the full 18 plus hours of battery life when running this beta, which is nice to see. And as far as the battery life in general with M2, I'm not really seeing that noticeable of a difference between this and what I've experienced on the M1 MacBook Air, but I didn't really do dedicated battery testing between these two devices. So if you wanna see a direct comparison between the M1 and M2 MacBook Air, let us know in the comments section down below. But like I said, no battery issues to be concerned about with the M2 Air running the Ventura beta. As far as other bugs and issues I've encountered on the M2 MacBook Air running this beta, fortunately, there's been really nothing consistent, quite honestly. I've had a few notification and settings app glitches here and there, but so far there really hasn't been anything that's happened to me that completely and definitively deter me from recommending that you install this beta for yourself. Like I said at the beginning of this video, this has been the most stable beta experience I've had out of all of my Apple Silicon Macs, and the beta will presumably get smoother and smoother as more updates are released. So if you're on the fence, I'd say just pull the trigger and try it out. But yeah, so far I'm really digging the new MacBook Air and the additional features I've now got access to thanks to the macOS Ventura beta. So be on the lookout for more content on the M2 Air coming soon. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for future content like this. Thank you all for watching and I'll talk to you guys in the next one. 9 to 5 Mac on YouTube is sponsored by MacPaw's Clean My Mac X. Clean My Mac is your ideal decluttering app for Mac that keeps your computer free of junk and other unwanted files. Clean My Mac X comes from the folks over at MacPaw who are diligent developers we all trust. And they've made sure that Clean My Mac is not only one of the safest Mac cleaning apps out there, but one of the smartest and most well-designed. With just a few clicks, you're very easily able to tune up your Mac to its maximum speed. You can get rid of those large hidden files that you can't easily locate in the finder. Clean My Mac X also fights off and protects your computer from Mac specific malware. And those are just a few features. For the next two weeks, viewers can get a 5% discount on Clean My Mac X. So be sure to check the link in the description and take advantage of that offer. And a big thanks to MacPaw for sponsoring 9to5Mac on YouTube.